dare to play. I'm Nancy Drew. This is my center of operations, my desk. Go ahead and poke around. If you want to know the particulars of how I do what I do, take a look at the book titled How to Be a Detective. It's real helpful, especially if you're new to the mystery solving business. P.G. Krollmeister has hired me to investigate a series of equipment meltdowns that have been plaguing the prominent Oklahoma Storm Research Team he sponsors. Since his team has been expected to win the $100 million grant at stake in the upcoming Green Sky Storm competition, Krollmeister suspects that there is something far more sinister than simple equipment failure going on. I'll be joining the team undercover, replacing their previous intern, Pete, who wound up with a broken leg after one of the accidents stranded him directly in the path of a storm. Stepping in at the most dangerous and chaotic period of the chase season, I'm going to have to keep my wits about me to stay on top of the sabotage and the storms. It's a weird piece of debris. Whoa, it's filled with money. I better take this and see who it belongs to. Next week, on the season finale of Height General, will Dr. Merring finally ask Nurse Julie out? Will the doctors find out that Sylvia still faints at the sight of blood before she performs Mr. Jenkins' Inspector Colonotomy? Find out Tuesday. We'll see you at the ICU. Next week, on the season finale of Height Next week, on the season finale of Next week on season finale. Previously on Attorney General. I never asked to be a four-star general. And I never asked to be a With the Milan premiere only weeks away, we'll travel to Paris, France to take a sneak peek at Madame Lafayette's race. Then we'll hop the pond to London and preview Lady Chauffeur's. Previously on Attorney General. I never asked to be a four-star general. And I never asked to... Previously on Attorney... Next week on season... Fin With the Milan... Pre
All right, got it. Hmm, looks like garbage. Don't need this. <gasps> mice! I agreed to tornadoes, but I did not sign up for mice. Again? All right, Mouse. This house isn't big enough for the both of us. Nancy, is that you? Yes, that's me. Scott wants to meet you. Be right there. Nancy Drew, you made it. I'm Scott Varnell, the person in charge of this meteorological train wreck. Welcome aboard. Did you see the tornado? <laughs> what tornado? Thanks to the lousy equipment that uncle of yours stuck us with, we just spent the last hour chasing down a bunch of cumulonimbi barely capable of spawning a spring shower, let alone a tornado. Wait a minute. Did you see a tornado? Well, yeah. As I was driving up to the farmhouse, it wasn't that big, but it sure threw a lot of debris around. Well, isn't that just peachy? We spend hours racing all over the countryside, and where's all the action? Right in our own backyard. We're never gonna win this thing. The school's gonna pull the plug on us, sell the farm, and that's gonna be all she wrote. And it's all Krollmeister's fault for saddling us with a bunch of bush league junk. But now that you're here, maybe our luck will change. You'll be reporting to Debbie, but make no mistake, I call the shots around here. In fact, two things you need to do right off the bat. I gotta give a workshop on tornado preparedness at the junior high school next week, so put a sample disaster kit together for me. If anything's missing, go up the road to Mon Paws and get it there. What else would you like me to do? Second thing you need to do is redesign the warning siren layout for the local community. They just got a set of new sirens and their range is different, so the town asked me, and now I'm telling you, to figure out where to place them so if there is a tornado, everyone will be within earshot of a siren. All the information you need is on the chart in the other room. You have questions about anything, bug Debbie, not me. Nice meeting you. That tornado you just saw. What'd you think? What do you mean? Were you excited? Terrified? Did it make you want to go home? What? Actually, that tornado is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life, and I can't wait to see another one.
Now that's what I like to see. Wish I could get that sort of enthusiasm out of my students these days. Between you and me, the last few years I've gotten stuck with the worst students. I could be telling them about the most exciting storms on record, and all I get back is a sea of bored faces. Before they defunded my department, I got the best of the best. Students who really cared, like Debbie. But those days are over. That must really be disappointing. <sighs> what are you, like, 18? Do me a favor, kid. Don't talk to me about disappointment till you've lived long enough to experience it firsthand. I'm sorry, Nancy. That was... I know you meant well. Anyway, good news is it looks like weather conditions for the next two weeks are going to be ideal for tornado genesis. Which means we could be in for a record-breaking string of tornadoes. You may be putting that enthusiasm to good use. I sure hope so. Nancy, hi! You've met Scott, the project leader. I'm Debbie, the project manager. You're the one who'll be giving me orders? Pretty much. First thing every morning, drop by to see me. I'll let you know what has to be done that day. Sounds like you've been having a lot of equipment problems. Let's just say that Scott is extremely good at misdirecting blame. You think the problems are really Scott's fault? But hey, I could be wrong. Which, by the way, is something you'll never hear him say. Anyway, as for the rest of today, those two jobs Scott gave you, get them done. Pretty much everything he says in there, I can hear out here. He's not exactly a low talker. The chart with all the siren stuff is in the living room, and that computer quiz you took will tell you what needs to go into the kit. If any items are missing, you can go to Ma and Pa's general store up the road and buy them. Just purchase wisely, our budget is very limited. And if you haven't introduced yourself to Pa or finished the filing, please do so. And once you're done with all that, you can head out to the cornfield and fix the sprinkler system. Fix the sprinkler system? See, this farmhouse and the acreage it sits on were donated to Canute as a research facility. The chase team gets it during tornado season. The agricultural team's here the rest of the year, so we've agreed to maintain whatever projects they've got going in their absence. Right now, they're in the middle of collaborating on something with this big mucky muck research center in Hawaii. Which is just another way of saying, fix those sprinklers ASAP. I found this box out front when I arrived. Thought maybe I better turn it in. Wow. There must be a couple hundred dollars in here. Job. Thanks. Payment enclosed. You don't know whose it is? No idea. I heard you tell Scott about seeing that tornado, so my guess is the Twister carried it in from somewhere else. Maybe even somewhere miles from here. I'd feel better if you kept it. Sure. When I get a chance, I'll call the sheriff and report it. Would you happen to know who threw out the sales receipt for dried corn that's in the wastebasket over there? Dried corn? Why would anyone around here buy dried corn? To make the little piles of dried corn I keep finding around here, they look a lot more man-made than mouse-made. Are you suggesting someone has been deliberately feeding the mice? I think someone's been trying to lure them inside. Everyone on this team has his quirks, that is for sure. But deliberately causing a mouse infestation? <laughs> Nobody's that mental. Why is there a file in the cabinet labeled Grange Theater? Theater's kind of a passion with me. So when I got here at the beginning of tornado season, I found out the Grange needed a stage manager for the play it's putting on, and volunteered for the job. And soon became the sound and lighting director as well, which means when I'm not here or out in the field, I'm there. It sounds like you keep pretty busy. You don't even know the half of it. We're approaching final dress for the Grange's big play of the year. Everyone from around here shows up. You should ask Pa about it. He's got much more of a passion for the stage than you'd expect from a man in overalls. That's it for now. Okay. Oh, and thanks for driving that car up here for us. That was a big help. See ya.
All right, that's how it should look. Whoever just came in, give me a hand over here, would you? Uh, sure. Save me a lot of time if you kindly fix the LED display on the dash while I fix the wiring out here. But I've never fixed an LED display before. Just get inside and I'll tell you what's what. Okay. What y'all are looking at is the fuse board for the screen. The fuse are all there and they're all good, but the display won't work till you rearrange them. See how they numbered from one to eight? Yeah. What you gotta do is rearrange them so no consecutively numbered fuses are touching in any direction. Including diagonals? Yep. Fuse number one can't be touching fuse number two, which can't be touching three, which can't be touching four, and so on. Got that? I think so. Good. You know you're done when the screen lights up. Any luck, I'll be done out here about the same time. I did it! The screen says it's initializing. And I'm done out here. How's that for timing? You're Nancy, the new gopher, ain't you? Well, I'm Chase. I ain't gonna shake your hand because my hand's kind of a mess. Again, I appreciate the help. What do you do on the team? Right now, I'm fixing the car the fella you replacing was driving when he busted his leg. It's pretty much my job, fixing stuff. That okay with you? Yep. I like fixing stuff, and I like keeping busy, so this here is the perfect job for me. Plus, I'm learning a whole lot about Twisters. You live in these parts, the more you know about them, the better. Is that why they call you Chase? Because you chase tornadoes? And do they call you Nancy because you Nancy too many questions? Sorry, that was supposed to be funny. A lot of people think that, but the truth is, it's my name. It has been since before the day I was born. Why do you think so much equipment has been malfunctioning lately? Stuff breaks. If your luck's bad, it breaks a lot. Being such a negative person and all, Scott's like a bad luck magnet. With him in charge, I'd be more surprised if stuff wouldn't break him down all the time. How do you like working with Scott? Other than the fact that he can be ornier than a never-ridden bull in a buck and shoot and can holler longer and louder than all the football coaches in Oklahoma put together, I like him fine. Got this sick sense when it comes to twisters. Never see nothing like it. Kind of spooky sometimes. Is there anyone on the team you don't like working with? I like working with pretty much everybody. Oh, I suppose Frosty gets on my nerves sometimes. Mostly because he likes himself so much there seems to be little need for anyone else to go to the trouble. But most days we get along fine. The guy I'm replacing, what was the matter with his car? A bunch of stuff. Reason he broke down in the middle of that storm and slipped in all that hell was because his car had run out of antifreeze. Should I say coolant? And that's because mice chewed holes in his hose and made it leak. Have mice done anything like that before? Well, I don't know about here, but I saw a mouse chew clean through a two-by-four in less than an hour once. <laughs> of course, that was probably because my neighbor's dog was one piece of chicken wire away from having it for lunch. But I don't know what them mice found so appealing about that hose, but they sure went to town. It's over there on the workbench. Take a gander at it if you want. I've bugged you long enough. Nice meeting you, Nancy. Just do right by Scott and you'll do fine. This place could really use a cat. Hi, I'm Frosty. As you can probably tell from all this equipment, I'm the media guy. Still pictures, audio, video, digital, analog. I do it all. Do it pretty darn well, too. Is there a story behind the name Frosty? Sure is. A couple of years ago, before I met Scott or any other tornado chasers for that matter, I was out taking pictures of this ginormous thunderstorm that was brewing outside Norman. I'd drive for a while, jump out, snap some pictures, roll some video, jump back in, drive some more, just looking for good pictures, you know? I wasn't really paying attention to what the storm was doing until all of a sudden it got really, really dark. And then it just started pouring. 
And I mean, rain was coming down like my car had stopped under Niagara Falls. And the wind was blowing and the car was swaying. And then it started to hail. First just dime-sized stuff, then quarter-sized, then golf ball-sized. Then all of a sudden, the windshield shatters and a hailstone the size of a fist lands in my lap. Then another, then another. Turns out I'd punched the core of an incredibly powerful HP supercell. You'd punch the what of the who? <laughs> HP means high precipitation, lots of rain, and a supercell is a cloud formation capable of producing severe thunderstorms. The core is the worst part of a supercell, where violent updrafts can produce huge hailstones, to say nothing of tornadoes. Did you see one? That time, no. But I did roll down my window and start shooting, and I came away with photos and footage of hail that no one's been able to top yet. Overnight, I went from being Tobias Harlow, run-of-the-mill photographer, to Frosty Harlow, fearless documenter of extreme weather phenomena. So when and how did you join up with Scott? I joined the team last year after their photographer quit halfway through. This is my first full season. I'm the best thing that's ever happened to this team, I might add. I'm good. Do you get along with everyone? Of course. Oh, Scott likes to yell, but I can handle that. Beats working for Brooke. She's the leader of the team that's our biggest rival. Real bulldog. With lipstick. <laughs> and getting yelled at occasionally is nothing compared to some of the stuff I've been through. For instance... Did you get into a fight with a cat or something? What, these scratches? Ah, just a few minor war wounds. See, I was climbing the fence next to the old Fraser Creek windmill so I could get a clear shot of some amatis clouds. And what happens? I drop my camera bag right into a patch of brambles. Thorns just about took my arm off when I went to grab it. I'll catch you later. Pop in any time. Welcome to Mom Paws. I take it your pa? That's me. That's what everybody in a hundred miles knows me as. Pa. But I'll tell you something most of them don't know. That it's not your real name? Well, ain't you, Miss Smarty Boots. Little Miss Gal from up north who's helping out tornado chases from the Canute. How'd you know that? <laughs> not bad for an old codger, huh? Well, I know all sorts of stuff about you. I have a your cell phone number, Miss Nancy Drew. Let's see, it's 523-555-4399. How'd you like them apples? Someone on the Canute team told you I was coming, didn't they? Yeah, that they did. Debbie, she told me to keep an eye out for you and gave me your number. See, if something bad happens while you're all out there chasing twisters, it's important to have a way to get help. Staying connected in an emergency is just about the best way to stay safe. I'm kind of your emergency action central. Keep your numbers right here by the phone. Debbie, fill you in the way things work around here yet? Don't things work the way they normally do in stores? Not for y'all. You canoe folk got a lot of credit here, so instead of paying cash for food and equipment and such, you can charge it. You want to buy something that's not on Debbie's list, like something from the snack section, you got to pay for it using pa pennies. Using what? Pa pennies. Like this here. A little something I invented to make coming in here a little more interesting for tourists. In fact, go ahead and take it. You could use it or keep it as a souvenir. Hey, great. Thanks. Just a mom pa way of saying nice to meet you. Debbie tells me you're pretty involved in the local theater. Now that's a true fact if there ever was one. 
Nothing quite like being backstage when the lights go down. Come to think of it, it's just like that moment right before the storm hits. When the world goes dark and quiet, and all you can do is cross your fingers and hope for the best. So what's this play about? About this place, of course. From covered wagon times up to today. All about the men and women that made this town what it is today. I'm playing Percy Rutherford Hardcastle, town chef and area's first librarian. Back in those days, it wasn't no small thing to return a book late. That sounds interesting. Gonna be. If you're not out chasing twisters open at night, you should come. We're pretty near sold out, but I'll try to save your ticket. So do you ever chase tornadoes? Silliest thing I have heard tell of. Around here, you're lucky if a tornado don't come chasing after you. People who do that are just asking for it. So you've seen a tornado? Of course I have. Pretty much everybody I know has. <laughs> you research types and all your meters and senses and recorders and such. Chasing around out there thinking you're doing something all big and important. Know what the only real thing you can do when you see a tornado is, Miss Nancy Drew? Watch. You watch this dark, rampaging monster go tearing across the land, wrecking everything it touches, till all of a sudden, it ain't there no more. You can't go after it, you can't make it put everything back, you can't even get even with it, because it's just gone. All you can do is stand there thinking, now that ain't fair. That just ain't fair. Sounds like you're talking from personal experience. That I am. That I am. What else you need? Well, it was nice meeting you. I was just gonna say the same thing. Y'all take care now. I think I've got everything I need. Does this look about right? No, ma'am. Hmm, looks like I don't have enough money. I should figure out a way to get everything I need without going over budget. have one of those. I think I've got everything I need. Can I pay for these supplies now? I suppose so. Thanks. Sure thing. Whatever that is, I can't afford it right now. It looks like it won't accept paw pennies. The divining rod that's supposed to be here seems to be missing.
Oh yeah, take that, Sooners! I won! And that's how the West was won. Score! Nancy Drew wins again! What's going on there, Nancy? Did you know the divining rod that's supposed to be on display in your museum is missing? Missing? Why, I had no idea. How do you like that? Somebody must have took it. When did you last see it? It was there when I dusted. That was just last week. It wasn't last month. Anyway, I can't imagine why anybody would take it. All I think it's good for is fine and all. That's pretty much just a superstition. For most folks, that is. Some people around these parts still swear up and down divine and rods work. Well, guess I'm just gonna have to whittle me up a fake one and stick it in the display. Just be our little secret, okay? I'll let you get back to work. See you soon! Here. Oh, just a moment. 
But this is why we can't have nice things in the workshop. All right, go ahead, caller. Hi, it's Nancy. Do I know Nancy? Don't plug that into there. It's Nancy Drew. It sounds like you're a little busy. Is this a good time? Nope. Well, it was nice talking to you. Goodbye. Wait, hang on. We need to talk. Just teasing you, Indy. Mind if I call you Indy? Indy, I've been waiting for your call. If you mix those two beakers, I'm going to have to switch insurance companies again. <sighs> I trust you've been kicking up dust and giving those jokers some serious what for out there in Twister Country. Not exactly sure yet. I was hoping you could give me a little more information. Shoot. Do you think it's possible that your machines are just breaking on their own? My machines breaking? That's eight kinds of preposterous and two kinds of unbelievable and another kind of uh, something else. You ever hear the story about the fox and the grapes, Andy? No, but this really isn't the time. It's always time for this story. Well, actually, it's, it's a long story. And I forget the beginning. And most of the middle. But at the end, the fox turns to the grapes and says, Crowmeister products never break. That's... that doesn't seem right. <sighs> I was being metaphorical, Andy. Foxes don't talk, and grapes aren't known to be great listeners. But the long and the short of it is, my products don't break. It must be sabotage. But why would anyone want to do that? That's why I brought you on board, Andy. I need you to... Uh, Terrence! The Ark Welder is not a toy! I gotta run, Indy. You get in there and scare me up some clues. Call me back whenever you need, and if things are too hectic at the lab, I'll help you out as best I can. I was wondering, why are you so concerned about tornadoes? You must have a lot of other things to worry about. Truth is, I never have been one to worry, but darn if these storms don't have my socks twisted in a bunch something serious. See, Andy, most things in the world can be tamed, or at least tricked into behaving the way you want. Not weather. Ever since a tornado tore through my home, I've been obsessed with figuring out what makes those twisters tick. Pretty sure I built the machinery to do the job. That's why I need you to make sure nothing too funny is going on. Once I know I've made sure that no one else is ever caught off guard by a storm again, then I can move on to the next project. Until then, I just can't. I didn't know you got hit by a twister. Was everyone okay? Prudence Rutherford, she's the one who recommended I hire you, by the way, was over, and I'm afraid she took a pretty hard knock to the head when the storm came through so suddenly. Prudence Rutherford? Are you two... friends? That is none of your business. Uh, but if you really need to know... Oh, can you keep it together for two seconds? Oh. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, none of your business. Why are you so concerned about these machines? Now, there's no such thing as something that is just a machine. Every Krollmeister product is a work of art. Tell me about it. I couldn't agree more. You're not a yes-man, are you, Indy? Yes-men are dangerous. They get you thinking you're the greatest thing on Earth, and the next thing you know, you're making the dumbest decisions that ever could be made. I'm not. I was being honest. All right, then. What did you think of the Krollmeister salad cannon? It was a little too... <sighs> powerful for the job. Well, shoot. Add diplomacy to your list of skills, Indy. And what else can I do for you? Do you know why someone would want to lure mice into their house? Is this one of those sound of one tree clapping in the woods questions? Never was much good at those. No, someone actually seems to be luring mice into the house. Hmm. Sounds like you've got a reverse Pied Piper situation. What's that? Who knows? Just made it up. <laughs> I'd keep an eye out for something like that, though. And get a cat. Good talking to you again. Anything you need, just give me a call. Nancy! Is that Nancy? You don't need to give me that look. It's a legitimate question. Maybe someone called and asked you to name your favorite detective. Oh, like it hasn't happened before. Hey, look, I bet you there is something good on the other side of those cobwebs. Is this a bad time? 
No, no, it's a fine time. We're just caught up in... What we always seem to get caught up in any time I want to go somewhere in a hurry. You can't blame me for this one. All I said was there's definitely something fishy about this place. But I say that at least four times a day. Vacation's not going so great, I take it. Not so great by half. Oh, it's fine. He's just mad we had to leave Paris without visiting the... What's that thing called? The big boring stolen stone thing? Luxor Obelisk. Yeah, that thing. Why'd you have to leave so quickly? Same old... Hey, look, a hidden door. Why don't you go check it out, Joe? Sometimes, if you give him something to do... Definitely a secret door! Textbook example! Okay, go check it out. What was I saying? You know what? No use in backtracking. I've got maybe ten seconds before he butts in again to announce that he's found some secret lever or something. You're not going to believe what's in here! So, what exactly did come up? One second we're in Paris, and you know the drill. Museum leads to clues, clues lead to the Romanov fortune... I'm leaving a few steps out, but... I call it the mystery of the train trip. Would you please not do that? It's embarrassing. But enough about us. What's going on with you? You know P.G. Crowmeister, the founder of the company that makes <laughs> pretty much everything? I didn't know he was actually real. I thought he was more like actual astronaut, the Moonchunk spokesman. Or that cartoon pterodactyl that sells used cars. Wow, he must be a hundred years old. Hard to say. He's got more energy than anyone I've ever met. Anyway, he hired me because he thinks that someone is sabotaging some of his high-profile new storm detection equipment. He sent me out to Storm Country to investigate. Now, why would anyone want to sabotage storm measuring equipment? <sighs> I wish I knew. If you ask me, well, I guess it's too soon to ask me. Is there anything the two of us can help you with? Well, when I first arrived, I found a mysterious unmarked box full of cash. But I still have no clue who it belongs to. Hmm, it's hard to say what that's about. But one thing's for sure, it's important. Agreed. The fastest way to the bottom of any mystery is to follow the money. I don't think it's going to be that simple. It's definitely not going to be simple, but it's a guaranteed step in the right direction. Take a good long look at everyone on the team. Normal people don't just leave boxes of cash lying around. Good point. Will do. Any clue why someone would want to sever a coolant hose? If it's sabotage, it's not smart sabotage. It might be revenge. What do you mean, not smart sabotage? If it were me, not that I would ever do such a thing, I'd go after something a little harder to detect. Sure, driving without coolant will destroy a car, but the driver will get a warning before any real damage is done. It's more of an inconvenience than sabotage. So you're saying that whoever did this probably didn't know a whole lot about cars? That's my take on the situation. Does that help at all? I think so. Excellent. Do you know why anyone would want to attract mice into the house where we're staying? Is this someone a cat? Unlikely. Then I have no clue. Would either of you happen to know much about storm chasing? Unfortunately, not much more than the next guy on the street. But to me, it sounds a little crazy. Why would you want to chase anything that's 100,000 times bigger than you and full of electricity? Don't forget, this is some dangerous stuff. I won't. I'll check back with you in a bit. All right, take care over there. Hey there. How'd you wind up with a jar full of paw pennies? The ag students that work here are always dropping them, so every time I find one, I put it in that jar. With all those paw pennies, you must be pretty popular. Popular? Don't know about that. But everyone's always willing to lend a hand when there's chores to be done, so that's something. You got a sweet tooth? Me? Oh yeah. I've got a soft spot for any food that comes in a wrapper. You're all right, Ms. Nancy Drew. Tell you what, over there on my workbench is a bunch of circuit boards for the weather balloons where I was putting up. Now, since I can't put the board to use till it's been wired up just right, how about for every board you wire up right, 
I pay you something in pot pennies. Of course, since wiring them wrong just makes more work for me, you make too many mistakes and I only pay you some of what you earned up till then. Depending on how you did. What do you say? Sounds great. Like my dad always said, the best things in life are the things you earn. Anytime you want, just go on over there and start wiring up boards. There's some instructions over there that'll help get you going. Anything else on your mind? I'll check back with you later. I'll write it then. I'm ready to collect my paw pennies. Uh-oh. What work for me means less money for you.
finished for now. That's gonna cost you. Good morning, Debbie. Nancy, good morning. Got a few things for you today. That storm really shook up those sensors out in the cornfield. Could you put them back in line? After that, you should go spend some time in the field with Frosty. He really wants to show you some of the basics of storm photography. <laughs> Any chance to show off? That's it for now. Have fun! That ought to do it. I finished that disaster kit for Scott. Nice job. I'm supposed to remind you to check in with Debbie. She might need you to do something else. Will do. It looks like I need to connect the red beam to the red sensor and the blue beam to the blue sensor. Looks right. No, I am staying at Canute. As it is, he's already near the edge. We just have to give him a little push. No one is going to suspect a thing. I don't know how I feel about this anymore. This is not what I agreed to. I mean, when I said I'd help you, I didn't mean... Way too late to get cold feet here, Frosty. Scott needs to be taken care of. You know that, and I know that. <sighs> you're right. But we can't... No, you're right. It's time to get rid of him. Hello, PK. Now's not a very good time to talk. Not a good time? Hardly. Indy, one of my assistants just showed me footage taken by those storm chasers you're with, and they get way too close to the storm. You don't need to be getting that close to the storm. That's why I invented those machines. Okay, I'll be sure to keep my distance. Oh, good. Uh, not that I was worried that you would. <laughs> not that I was worried at all, actually. I'm, uh, I'm not the type to worry. Now, tell me what you've dug up on the team so far. Tell me about this Scott character. He's a little hard to read. There seems to be some distance between him and the rest of the team. It might be because he wants it that way, but there could be something else. It's almost like no one fully trusts him. Interesting. Hmm. You'll make sure to keep a close eye on that one. Of course, but... But he's not your only suspect? Right. Well, good. Don't hold back. Tell me everything you know. Uh, what's up with the shutter bug? Frosty, is it? He and Debbie are plotting something, and whatever it is sounds a little sinister. Plotting? How so? Well, I overheard them talking. They were talking about how someone, I assume Scott, was close to the edge, and they were going to do something about it. You stay close to the both of them. Report back to me when you're done. Hey there. I'd better get going. Bye now. Don't forget me!
Okay, let's start taking pictures. All right, where's the best place to go? We've got a lot of different formations to spot, so if you head on out to the Fraser Creek Windmill, that'd be perfect right now. This will help you identify the shots you need to take. When we get some good photos, we'll move on. You've got to keep a sharp eye out or you'll miss what's right in front of you. I'll be sure to download the photos into the gallery when we get back to the farmhouse. That's a good one. You know, I didn't always want to be a storm photographer. Oh yeah? Yeah, I used to want to be a doctor. What changed your mind? Studying. <laughs> it's hard to stay focused on some boring little book when there's so much going on outside. I'm getting some great shots here. What about you? So you got the chasing button. I'm getting some great shots here. What about you? That's the idea, keep trying. So, what's up? I'll catch you later. Oh, I almost forgot. Do me a favor and give this to Chase for me. I borrowed it from him. Keep forgetting to return it. Sure. Thanks, Nancy. You're the bomb. I'm gonna hit the sack, Nancy. You should do the same. Come on, Donna, get off, get off, get off! Who's he talking to? How come something that makes such a mess be worth so much money? I'm never gonna get this stuff off. These are my best boots, dang it! Get out! That was a little weird. Hey there. 
Frosty asked me to return this to you. Thanks. Does he borrow stuff from you a lot? Hardly ever. Him and me don't exactly have a ton of stuff in common. He's the outgoing, sophisticated type, and I'm just a simple country boy. Won't let me forget it, neither. What's Debbie's relationship to Frosty like? Well, I always figured she didn't have much use for him. But you know, lately, seems like she and him been hanging out with each other a lot. Nothing romantic or anything like that, just, you know, talking. Sure don't know about what. I'll let you go. Adios. This is a broadcast of the Hello? Emergency is Notification there? System. There have been multiple reports of a tornado touchdown in the area. All listeners are advised to seek shelter until further notice. I'd better get down into the cellar until the storm passes. Shoot, the power must be out. I'm looking for candles. Can you help? Someone is out there, right? Hello? Who's there? Hello? I better look into that in the morning. Good morning. What did you think of that storm last night? Pretty loud, huh? Well, yeah. I think it would have been impossible to sleep through that. You'd be surprised. Chase and Frosty? Those two could sleep through a circus explosion. Before I forget, Scott wants to talk to you. So make sure you go in there as soon as you leave here, okay? Sure thing. Since it doesn't look like we'll be chasing any storms today, the prairie dogs that have taken up residence by the cornfield, I just got noticed that the ag people are going to exterminate them. What? But that's not fair. They're not hurting anyone. You're right. Fortunately, there's time for you to move them to the other side of the barn. But you're going to have to move quickly. I told Chase to come up with a way to move them so they don't get hurt. Hopefully he's figured it out by now. So after you talk to Scott, go talk to Chase. Got it. Great. Thank you so much. I do it myself, but I'm buried in work right now. You're a lifesaver. Literally. Nancy, hi. Look, uh, Debbie tells me it would be good for morale if I gave people around here a few attaboys every now and then. So I just wanted to say you did a pretty fair job driving during the chase yesterday. Thank you. Well, let's not get cocky. I mean, there's always room for improvement. For instance, when you're driving in a steady downpour, you should always... Ah! Did you see that? Did you see that? Those dagnabbit mice are everywhere, and I'm sick of it. So if you were wondering what your next job was going to be, now you know. Get rid of the mice in here. Just make sure you do it humanely, or Debbie will never let me hear the end of it. Maybe you can get one of those Piper guys, or better yet, some kind of catch-and-release trap at that Ma and Pa store. Just get it done, okay?
Oh, if it ain't my favorite customer. I was just wondering, where's the ma part of ma and pa's? Ma? Oh, she's around, and, you know, running errands and such. She'll be in later. What else you need? That mousetrap you have in the museum, the one that lets people catch mice instead of kill them, do you think that maybe I could borrow that? Well, I think I could lend it to you, sure. Long as you do a little something for me first. You bet. You can update the tornado display I got set up over there. Just move the stuff on it around till it compares the old Vegeta way of saying how bad a twister is. You know, F1, F2, F3 and such. Until it correctly compares that scale to the new one. You know, the enhanced Vegeta scale. EF1, EF2, and EF3, and the like. The scale they switched over to a couple years back. You might have to do a little reading, but you can do that for me in return for the mousetrap, right? No problem. Atta girl. Hey there. I'm supposed to relocate those prairie dogs. How do I do that without hurting them? By using the handy dandy prairie dog vacuum I just invented. Won't hurt one single hair on their fur little heads. At least it won't after I replace this tube with a bigger one. How soon are you supposed to move them? By the end of the day. Well then get yourself over to Mom Paul's and trade this tube in for one that's a bigger size. I'll set you up as soon as you get back. Great, thanks. Anything else on your mind? I'll let you go. Bye now. Done with that Vegeta scale display? To be honest, I haven't even started it. So what you need? I need a bigger tube for a vacuum Chase is building for me. Can you help me out? Sure, as long as you do a little something for me. What's that? Head over to the snack aisle. You can update the display I got set up over there. Sure, have a good day. Don't let them canutes work you too hard. I did it! Well, if it ain't my favorite customer. I finished up the candy display. Atta girl, here. Thanks. Well, if it ain't my favorite customer. That mousetrap you have in the museum, the one that lets people catch mice instead of kill them, do you think that maybe I could borrow that? Well, I think I could lend it to you, sure. Long as you do a little something for me first. You bet. You can update the tornado display I got set up over there. Just move the stuff on it around till it compares the old Vegeta way of saying how bad a twister is. You know, F1, F2, F3 and such. Until it correctly compares that scale to the new one. You know, the enhanced Vegeta scale. EF1, EF2, and EF3, and the like. The scale they switched over to a couple years back. You might have to do a little reading, but you can do that for me in return for the mousetrap, right? No problem. Atta girl.
Every 10 years, the jackalopes emerge from their mountaintop caves to forage for food. Rarely seen by humans, these graceful creatures are said to have the high spirits and speed of a jackrabbit and the roundness of a cantaloupe. If you encounter a jackalope in the wild, yell loudly. Try to appear larger by removing your jacket over your head. If you encounter a jackalope in the wild, try to appear more important by name dropping a few celebrities. If this fails, try offering the jackalope a small cash bribe. Howdy, Brooke. Stocking up again so soon? Are you just back because you missed me? A little of A and a little of B. Well, go ahead. What's the word out here this week? Don't keep me in suspense. It's uh, been uh, nothing special to report now, I guess. Nothing to report? Nothing at all? Are you feeling all right? Yeah, oh, sure. It's been a slow week, so... Not even any good gossip about Scott's team? Any new blunders I can take back to the guys? I know it can't be smooth sailing over there these days. I mean, come on. No, no, no. Uh, very smooth sailing with Scott's team is what I always say, but uh, just remember, I, I got a lot to do in the store. Better get to that. You just grab anything you need now. Take some candy on the way out, too. It's all me. Okay. See you around, I guess. Well, congratulations, Nancy. From what I've seen, you got that Vegeta display set up just perfect. So go ahead and help yourself to that mousetrap. Y'all earned it. Something else I can do you for? Who is that woman asking all of those questions about Scott? Ah. Now, I'm not one to talk bad about people around here, but that was Brooke. She ends up the other team of chasers. Maybe you heard of her. She was really nosy. Not nosy, just all right, nosy. But she and Scott are just so much alike. Guess it makes sense they'd always be checking up on each other. Scott comes in here asking about her? Oh, without a doubt. I've enjoyed talking to you. Stop by anytime. That's too much money.
Nancy Drew wins again. Yeah, take that, Sooners! I won! Well, if it ain't my favorite customer. Want some candy? Um, uh, you offer me some of my own candy there now? Sure am. That's real nice and all, but between you and me, I can't stand the new stuff on the market these days. Too sweet. Give me clove box snappers any day. Or Dr. Bellaton's reconstituted rhubarb cordials. Now those will can is worth saving your pennies for. Good seeing you again. Y'all hurry back. Mmm. 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 I think I had too much candy. I'm gonna be sick. Mm -hmm.
Hey there. I went to pause and got a bigger tube for that prairie dog vacuum. This okay? Well, let's find out. There you go. One handy dandy prairie dog vacuum. How does it work? We just turn it on, stick the tube in the hole, and all the critters in the burrows going to that hole will be sucked into the bag. That sounds a little rough. Are you sure they're going to be okay? Of course they will. Built this baby here with safety in mind. That's why it's so ugly. Now don't forget, if there ain't any critters in the burrows going to that hole, you'll lose suction and some of the ones that you've caught will escape. You gotta make sure you catch all of them before you move them. Okay. Just keep at it and you'll do fine. There's some paw panties in if you remember to bring this back when you're done. Don't want it falling into the wrong hands. Prairie Dog's life is rough enough as it is. Anything else on your mind? I'd better get going. All righty then. I should relocate the prairie dogs first. I bet I can find a new home for the prairie dogs right around here. Looks like the perfect new home for the prairie dogs. I'd better empty out the vacuum here. Here you go, little guys. Good luck in your new home. It kind of looks like the money box I found at the farmhouse. I better make sure to fill all of the traps. Ugh, mice.
should do it. I got him. Well, finally. Now take him outside and dump him. The spring house out on Old Orchard Road. That should be far enough away. Let him go there. You got it. Hey there. I'm all done with the prairie dog vacuum. Here you go. All righty then. Anything else on your mind? I'll let you go. All righty then. And that's how the West was won. And that's how the West was won. Thank you. 
And that's how the West was won. I win! Bring on the pennies! And that's how the West was won. And that's how the West was won. Oh yeah, take that Sooners, I won! That's too much, that's out of my, that's out of my price range. I need to let these mice go before they starve or something.
And that's how the West was won. And that's how the West was won. What can I do for you, little lady? Where's Ma? Still not here? <laughs> nope. She, uh, she had to drive over to Chickasha. Sister's lumbago's acting up. Anything else I can help you with? Good seeing you again. See you soon. Let's move! This storm is about to go critical! We need to get out in the field now! You're riding point with Frosty. Scott and I will be tracking the storm. Let's go! Woohoo! We're gonna get a twister! Oh, check that out. No. No, 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 shoot! Video camera just died. Here, fix it. I've got to keep shooting stills.
I fixed it. Here you go, Frosty. Just in time, thanks. Uh-oh, we got some trouble. The funnel is headed right for that building. Look at that! Knocked that barn flat! I hope it was as abandoned as it looked. It's roping out! It didn't record a thing! I thought you said you fixed it! I did fix it! Let's head back to the homestead. So, still think tornadoes are cool? You bet I do. I think what they are is cool, but after today, I'm sure not a fan of what they do. That's something that researchers, myself included, all too often forget. As exciting as it is to chase tornadoes, they are hugely destructive, and the damage they do to lives and livelihoods is all too often horrible and irreparable. <sighs> what a disheartening day. An EF3, and we failed to get so much as one inch of footage on it, thanks to you. What do you mean, thanks to me? Frosty says you failed to fix his video camera in time to record anything. But, but that's not true. I fixed it in plenty of time. Look, I don't want to hear excuses. Just go. Call it a day and make sure it doesn't happen again, okay? Okay. I'm gonna hit the sack, Nancy. You should do the same. Hi, Debbie. How's it going? Morning, Nancy. Looks like it's shaping up to be another big day for all of us. First things first, we've got huge communications problems right now. I had Chase fix up the GPS units and add the comm antenna location. I need you to take a trip over to see what the problem is. After that, I know Chase asked if you could drop by and talk to him, okay? I have got some extra candy. Would you like a piece? Of course. Thanks, Nancy. That's it for now. Have fun! With the Milan premiere on... Previously on Attorney General. I never asked to be a four-star general. With the Milan premiere only... Previously on Detective Beach. You're a loose cannon, McNorton. I want your badge and your surfboard out of my desk immediately. Only one man would be crazy enough to use a shark to rob a bank. You gotta put me back on the case, Chief. Previously on Are You a Detective? Andrew Morris, you are... Not a detective! With the Milan premiere... Next week on season finale of Heights General, will Dr. Mary finally ask you of Julia? Will the doctors find out that Sylvia still faints at the sight of blood before she performs Mr. Jenkins' spectacle last week? Find out Tuesday. We'll see you at the ICU. Yes? Pa tells me that you've been asking him about Brooke. Is that true? Huh? No, that's not true. Oh, maybe Pa's mistaken. Exactly. I'm not the type to go after the personal lives of fellow scientists. Right, but Pa did seem pretty certain. You know, maybe you should spend less time talking to Pa and more time doing your job here, Nancy. Rich uncle or no, you have work to do. So do it. 
Do you remember that interview you gave after Ma died? Nope. Why do you ask? I read it, and it seems like well, a lot has changed for you over the last few years. What's that supposed to mean? You sounded much more excited about your work. Yeah, well, that's the reality of life, Nancy. You don't honestly think life gets more exciting as you age, do you? Because it doesn't. Dreams fade, hearts get broken, friends get too lost in their own lives to call. Trust me, enjoy your youth while you have it, kid, because the downhill ride, it ain't fun. That's not true. <laughs> now I see why Debbie speaks so highly of you. Optimists of a feather. Tell you what, I'll admit that you just may be right. I hope you're right. I just don't think you are. Let's switch topics, all right? This has been a long enough trip down memory lane for the day. What did you mean when you said before that the school would sell the farm if you lose? Just what I said. Right now, Canute College offsets the costs of maintaining this place with funds from private companies like the Healy Healy. But apparently that money's about to dry up, so if we don't win this competition, there goes the farm. Why don't you get a cat for your mice problem? Cats? Forget about it. I'm deathly allergic to cats. Mice are annoying, but at least they don't leave me sneezing and short of breath. Can I interest you in some candy? Why not? Nancy, this is cheese. What am I supposed to do with cheese? I have got some extra candy. Would you like a piece? Why not? Nope, I don't do chocolate. Would you like some candy? Okay. Wait, did you ask if I wanted candy or if I wanted cheese? I'm a little confused. Can I interest you in some candy? Okay. Oh, cool. Gum. Even better. I'll let you get back to work. Whatever. So, what's up? How come Scott told me you didn't get any footage on that tornado we saw? Because I didn't. I told you. That camera you said you'd fixed was still broken. But I did fix it. I'm sure of it. Nope. Still broken. You can see for yourself if you want. I left it upstairs. In all the excitement, I, I didn't double check your work until it was too late. So, I guess it's partially my fault. I told Scott to go easy on you. And since you're still standing, <laughs> guess he did. Look, we just had some bad luck. Means odds are next time, we'll have good luck. Stuff happens. Forget about it. I have got some extra candy. Would you like a piece? Well, I guess that'd be okay then. Thanks. Thanks for all the advice. Take care. Nancy, now this is what you call perfect timing. I was just getting ready to put the transmission of this car back together. But seeing as you're here and seeing as Debbie said I should feel free to give any job I don't have time for to you, that's just what I think I'll do. Sounds like fun. All you gotta do is put the gears I just cleaned back on three horizontal rods. There's a notch for each gear, so just figure out which size gear goes to which notch. Of course, you gotta make sure when the gears line up vertically, they touch but don't overlap each other. It's not hard, just takes a little time and a little bit of trial and error. No problem. That won't work. The gears will overlap.
Yes! I did it! I got all the gears back on the rods. Fine job, Nancy. Now come on over here. Something else I need you to do. I need for you to run this here estimate over to Scott. It's for the body work that needs to be done on Pete's car. Scott's supposed to look it over and sign it before I give the repair shop the go-ahead. Well, I'll take it to him. Appreciate it. Anything else on your mind? Would you like a little candy? Well, I just had a couple of candy bars, so just a small piece. All right, I love chocolate. That's it for now. Bye now. Yes? Oh, Chase asked me to give you this estimate from the auto repair shop. Oh yeah, he warned me this was coming. I'll take care of it, thanks. Pretty scary how much damage a bunch of frozen raindrops can do to a car. Of course, they've been frozen to the size of golf balls thanks to several miles worth of updraft. <laughs> was that Frosty? Yes, that was Frosty. Look, go down there and whatever his problem is, take care of it, okay? I don't have time for any histrionics. Nancy, come over here! Look, try not to get upset, but I just discovered we have a really big problem down here. Mice. One just scampered right across my keyboard. My keyboard, Nancy! That's way over the line! You're afraid of mice? What? Who? Me? What? Afraid? No. I mean, so what if they crawl all over everything and come darting out of the shadows when you least expect it and have those tiny pink feet and those skinny little tails? The okay, yes, mice totally creep me out, all right? The point is, I can't get anything done with them scampering their brains out down here and somebody like you needs to get rid of them. Please? I'd be happy to. Bless you. Okay. Well, what are you waiting for? Go for it. What can I do for you, little lady? Have Scott and his team always been so... accident prone? I'd say they've always been reality prone. If you're the type to chase down tornadoes, the reality of the situation is that you're pretty much giving trouble your home address. But from what I've been hearing, this year has been especially bad. I've enjoyed talking to you. Y'all hurry back!
That's all of them. Don't worry, fellas. You're gonna like your new home. Wind sure did a number on these things. There's pieces of them everywhere. There, now they should work. What's that? Somebody on Scott's team probably dropped this.
need to get out of here. 99 leaks. That's not the right way back to the farm. What is going on here? Somebody must have programmed this thing to give faulty directions. Error. Return home. New destination processing. Turn right now. Hey, Nancy. Frosty's got quite the unusual scream, doesn't he? Well, he had kind of a good reason. Oh, come on. Did you scream when you saw that mouse in Scott's office? No. He thinks he's so smooth. First time I heard him do that, I thought my little sister was downstairs. What do you want to do now that you've finished your degree? Actually, I... I'm not sure yet. I, I'm still kind of weighing my options. Thanks to that faulty GPS, I wound up in the middle of a violent thunderstorm on my way back from fixing the antenna. I know it sounds paranoid, but I think someone tampered with it. You sure you were operating it correctly? Positive. I'll have Chase take a look at it. What else is going on? I better get to work. Have fun! I can't turn in. I still have stuff to do. One of the things I want you to do today is trap the mice I keep seeing by the table and get them out of here. They're starting to get pretty annoying. I better get to work. Have fun! And that's how the West was won.
all of them. Don't worry, fellas. You're gonna like your new home. It's late, Nancy. Why don't you call it quits for the day? Morning, Debbie. What's up? If I seem a little frantic, it's because there's a front moving in capable of producing a supercell. Maybe even lots of supercells. So we're moving out ASAP. Everyone's already outside. You'll ride with Chase and the... <laughs> Holy cow! That was the jack for Scott's phone! Forget what I was saying. You're gonna have to stay here and fix Scott's phone connection. Scott will freak if he comes back and his phone doesn't work. As soon as I finish entering these data, I am out of here. Go on, go fix that phone! Go! But how do I fix a phone? I've never done anything like that. It probably just needs to be rewired. I've seen you work. I know you can figure this out for us. Come on, Debbie. Let's get going. On my way. should do it. There. All fixed. What's that sound? As long as you're making sure that everything looks right, you know what I'm talking about. Hey, I know what I'm doing here. That's Scott. This headset must have some kind of wireless connection to his cell phone. Wonder who he's talking to. Congratulations! Any chance you can keep your act together so that the rest of the world doesn't also know what you're up to? No one suspects a thing, Brooke. Brooke? That's the name of the leader of that rival chase team. Let's try to keep it that way. You worry about keeping up your part of the deal. I've got everything and everyone under control out here. There's some kind of residue on the blade. Hmm, smells like... Coolant.
with the Milan Premier. Previously on Attorney General. I never asked to be a four-star general. And I never asked. Previously on Are You a Detective? Andrew Morris! Previously on Detective Beach. You're a loose cannon, McNorton. I want your badge and your surfboard on my desk immediately. Only one man would be crazy enough to use a shark to rob a bank. You gotta put me back on the case, Chief. With the Milan... Next week, on season finale of Heights General, will Dr. Merring finally ask Nurse Julie out? Will the doctors find out that Sylvia still faints at the sight of blood before she performs Mr. Jenkins' Inspector Colon off me? Find out Tuesday. We'll see you at the ICU. See, good to hear from you. I've been watching the weather. Things look like they've been pretty rough out there. Glad to hear you made it through okay. It was pretty intense. We would have gotten some great data, but... Uh, you still got a saboteur on the loose. Well, what else is new? Can you tell me anything about Brooke Tavanaugh? Mmm, now that's some good detective work. You want to make sure that we're not overlooking what's going on with the other team, am I right? That's right. Now, I don't know much about Brooke, except that she's pushing hard for that number one spot. Very ambitious and very smart. A woman with that kind of talent doesn't need to sabotage her competitors, but that doesn't mean that she wouldn't. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Just out of curiosity, how many products do you make? Oh, mm-hmm. Let me see now. Uh, uh, Kohlmeister Particle Accelerator, uh, Kohlmeister Salad Cannon, uh, Crawl my well, the whole line of salad dressings, of course, and then there's a uh, uh, not a clue, a lot. Never took the time to count. Do you have a favorite invention? Oh, well, now that you mention it, no, not really. All the really good ones got done before I came on the scene. Would have liked to come up with something big like uh, the clock or the, or the car or the zipper, but that's the drawback of being a modern day inventor. I'll be honest, most of the inventing I do is just gluing one thing onto another. Like the phone radio or the thermometer pen. It's not exciting, but it's what the public seems to want. <laughs> would it be possible for someone to sabotage a GPS device? Of course it would! It takes a top-notch mind to put together something as complicated as a GPS device. Uh, but I don't need to tell you that. It's always easier to destroy something than it is to make it work well. Why do you ask? My GPS went a little wonky and sent me right into a storm, and I don't think it was an accident. I don't like the sound of that one bit, Dandy. From now on, I want you reading maps, too. Like the old saying goes, trust but verify. I'm going to do some snooping on my end to see what kind of people you're dealing with out there. They might be worse than I suspected. Thanks. Any idea why Debbie would be turning down better jobs to stay at Canute? Andy, much as I love to help you with every small detail of your... Oh, come on, people! That's not even ours! Uh, now, uh, what was I saying? Was I lecturing you, or were we talking? Um, talking. Technically. Really? Let me go to the old playback. Hmm. Can't expect me. Minus scrape, big crash... Nope. Braid, that's not how I remember it. All right, then, let me continue. Uh, never mind. I can't even work up a good lecture these days with this crew. What can I do for you, Andy? Were you able to find anything out in your research on the team? Aside from Frosty's impressive collection of unpaid parking tickets, nothing yet. If you ask me, there's something suspicious about every last member of the team. I understand that feeling, N.D. Sometimes, when I'm working on a new product, the solution seems to be nowhere in sight. But if you keep marching forward, you'll come face to face with that solution before you know it. Just the way it works. Good talking to you again. Call me as soon as you learn anything new. Please tell me you're going to get right up in the middle of things. Frank and I just saw footage from last year's EF3 in Kansas on the internet and... And we think that you should be very careful out there. 
and shouldn't do anything reckless. Unless you're with Frosty. He's the best. You know Frosty? Of course. He's only the most fearless shooter on the storm circuit today. Everyone's seen that one picture he took, the one with the grapefruit-sized hail flying right at the lens. You know what I'm talking about. You sure you're talking about the same Frosty here? The one with a high-pitched scream? High-pitched screaming aside, it takes a lot of bravery to shoot out in the field. One man's bravery is another's reckless stupidity. Half dozen six situations aside, I... You should definitely keep an eye on him. Awesome photographer or not, something's not on the up and up. I'll keep that in mind. Do you know why anyone would want to attract mice into the house where we're staying? Is this someone a cat? Unlikely. Then I have no clue. I found some very interesting letters. All right. Tell me more. Seems that Debbie's been turning down some pretty good employment opportunities. All right, that's... not very interesting at all. Continue. It's getting there, trust me. It seems from these letters that Debbie expects to take control of the team soon. Deb all right, she's ambitious. These go beyond ambitions. From reading these letters, it's clear that she expects Scott out and soon. Not hopes he'll leave, expects him to be gone. Now, either she has some information that none of the rest of the team has, or... Or she plans on pushing him off the team herself. I could really use some help working on the weather balloon circuitry. Since you don't know where the connections are, you're going to have to use the process of elimination. Start by looking along the edges for fans marked with five, or for fans in the corners with three. That means all possible connections leading from those fans are wired. Sounds good. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. If it ain't my favorite customer. I've enjoyed talking to you. Y'all hurry back. Mice? I don't know. Looks to me like this was made by the knife I saw in Scott's office. Looks like Chase stepped in that oil puddle I saw by the sprinklers. Or are there other puddles of oil around here? Hello? Nancy! Good. Glad I got you. You all right now? Everybody get through that storm? Yeah, we're all fine. Great. I was hoping so, but after something that big, thought I'd better check. Well, I got you on the phone. Something's come up, and I can really use you down at the store. Please, hurry! Okay, I'll be right there. And you brought the mouse trap. Good. Because I've been seeing a lot of mice lately, especially by that homesteader display in the museum. Must have a nest right beside it. I want you to catch them for me and get them out of here before the health department hears about it. They give me a hard enough time already for selling all them Coco Kringle products. I can do that for you, sure. That's a spit here. Here's one of them moon chunks to use as bait. Ooh, I'll need that. Thanks. So you just go on over there and have at it.
You can't leave, Nancy. There's still mice to be caught. Ah, ah, ah. You ain't going nowhere till you catch them mice. That's out of my price range. I'm finished here. Thank you kindly. Now get him out of here before any tourists see him. Thanks for catching that mice, Nancy. wasn't there before. That's the divining rod that's missing from the museum. I wonder if someone was trying to hide it. And stepped in that pool of oil over there in the process. What's going on there, Nancy? You'll be happy to know I found your missing divining rod. Well, put the cat out of the rain. Where was it? Out in the spring house. If you can put it back in the display, I'll be truly grateful. I'll let you get back to work. Y'all hurry back. Just can't stay away, huh? I returned the rod to the display for you. Actually, you deserve more than that. Good seeing you again. Don't let them canutes work you too hard. Hey there. How was the chase that I missed? Oh, it went pretty good. Didn't see any funnel clouds, but I managed to plant a sensor right in the path of a major downdraft, if you can believe that. Congratulations. I take it that was a big deal? Oh, you bet. Been trying at that all season with no luck. Was Scott there to see it? He went in the base vehicle by himself, but he was real happy when he heard about that sensor. Yes, ma'am. Did you fix the GPS devices? Sure did. I think maybe they could use some more work. Mine went berserk and tried to lead me directly into the path of a storm. It did what now? It tried to lead me right into the storm. I'm real sorry, Nancy. All I did was run a few updates and... I'm very sorry it went haywire on you. I'll make sure it never happens again. You've been spending all your spare time around here trying to find oil, haven't you? 
What? Oil? Well, I've been doing no such thing. Where'd you get an idea like that? I found the divining rod you took from Pa's museum. The one you left by the old spring house. I should have known I wouldn't get away with it. Lying and conniving and sneaking around, they just don't come natural to me. My mama raised me just too right. See, I heard rumors there was an oil deposit somewhere underneath this here farm. I also heard the college was getting ready to dump the place, so I signed up with Scott, figuring I could look for oil, and if I found some, try to get my daddy to invest in a little real estate. Did you really think you could find oil using an oversized stick? It ain't no stick. It's a divining rod. And the one I took from Paul's isn't just any divining rod, neither. Used to belong to Charles Hamilton. It's that stick that made him the richest man in the state. My great-granddaddy saw it in action once. Saw it practically fly out of the man's hand and stick straight into the ground like it was being held there by some kind of magnet. The men started digging, and sure enough, they hid oil. And I found oil around here, too, a couple of times. Of course, when I started digging, all I ended up with were puddles. That's because of Scott. He's the one messing stuff up around here. He's a jinx. And that's the truth. Listen, I'm truly ashamed of my behavior, Nancy. I will apologize to Pa for taking that divine rod first chance I get. And I know it's highly unlikely, but should you and my mama ever cross paths... <laughs> I'll keep this to myself, but you've got to keep being honest with me. You got a deal. You know, come to think of it, I guess I can't rightly say all the bad stuff that's been going on is just bad luck. Like when I checked out the lightning rod on the farmhouse to see why Scott's phone blew up like that. I discovered something kind of strange. Instead of being wired so any lightning that struck the house would be directed to the ground, this here lightning rod connected to the wire inside the house. Someone wanted that phone jack to explode? Or the TV or the fridge. Someone just wanted to do some damage. But you're sure it was wired that way on purpose? Either that or this thing was put up by the world's dumbest electrician. I have got some extra candy. Would you like a piece? Is this a bribe? Whatever the terms, I accept. All right, I love chocolate. I'll let you go. Adios. Hey, thanks for fixing the phone. You didn't miss much on the chase. You didn't miss much around here either. Well, that's the brakes. Hey, you know, since you're so good at fixing things, why don't you fix the TV? I think we've abused it enough. It's not getting any picture. I think you guys have got a mouse problem. No, we've got a mice problem, which we're all just trying to ignore because there's really no time to do anything about it. I think maybe the little piles of corn I keep finding are what's causing it. I haven't noticed any little piles of corn. Little piles of dirt, yes, but corn? Anyway, it's more likely the mice are causing the piles. Probably storing up for the winter or something. Can I interest you in some candy? Why not? Chocolate? Thanks, Nancy. That's it for now. Have fun!
Daddy shows a clear fire plan. That's the footage from Frosty's camera. I'm sure of it. It did record after all. I think it's a lost cause, Nancy. It's permanently broke. Bummer. Hey, Nancy, whoa. Never seen that look on your face before. You've been secretly selling tornado footage to someone, haven't you? Uh, what? I have no idea what you're talking about. You've been shooting stuff for the team, but selling it on the sly, using the box under the yellow rose bush by the barn as a drop point. That's how you got all those scratches on your arm. And Debbie not only knows about it, she condones it. I overheard you two talking out in the cornfield. Or should I say, conspiring. You two are trying to get Scott so frustrated that he finally blows and says or does something that will force the college to let him go. Nancy, do you have any idea how crazy you sound? What I don't know for sure is whether you two are also responsible for the other stuff that's happened around here, like the hose in Pete's car and the equipment failure and the mouse infestation. Hmm, guess I'll just have to tell Scott everything and see what he thinks. Okay. Look, I don't know why you feel like you need to stick your big fat nose where it doesn't belong, but all I did was sell some pictures and footage to this girl I know who's trying to make a name for herself as a nature photographer. Legally, all the stuff I shoot belongs to the team, but that's totally unfair, and Debbie agrees. She knows how hard it is to get a good start, and she looks the other way. Don't be upset with her, though. She's just trying to help. But when it comes to all that other stuff, I had nothing to do with any of it, and neither did she. I promise you. So there's really no reason to tell Scott any of this, right? I guess not. You're a fine lady. Oh, and that big fat nose thing? Kidding. <laughs> so, uh, how are those cloud pictures coming? Actually, I'm having problems finding Cirrostratus. You know, if you head on out to the Fraser Creek Windmill, I'll bet you anything you'll get your picture. Weather conditions for Cirrostratus should be perfect right now. In the meantime, I gotta get back to work. See ya! I'm gonna hit the sack, Nancy. You should do the same. Good morning, Debbie. 
Nancy, perfect timing. We've got a couple target storms ready to go critical. We need to get out in the field now. You'll drive. Scott and I are going to be tracking the storm. Okay? Ready? Yes, let's go. We've got two, maybe three possible targets out there. All right, good. That's what I like to hear. Tell me what we're looking at. We got word that the northmost cell is already throwing some pretty sizable hail. We might be a little late on that one. All right, that's not the system I'm excited about anyway. Oh, it clicks it. We go west. It's a longer drive, but there's some good movement, high amount of shear. Perfect. From what I've been hearing, Brooks' team has been saying they already got six confirmed touchdowns and two good reads on supercells that didn't spawn funnels. It's your lucky day, Nancy. Since I don't feel like wrestling with the prehistoric Doppler unit, you're going to do it for me. Since Kanyuka care less about providing working equipment, we're stuck with this garbage. You're going to have to take care of warming it up since it's about twice your age. You're going to have to flip three switches, one in each group, to get it started. All the lights need to be set to blue before it starts working properly. Remember, the lights won't turn until you activate them. There it goes again! Shoot! We've got to get this back up and running quickly! If those cables get mixed up, it will be days before I can get them resorted. Make sure you keep those cables in order. Don't forget, the top cable goes in the first plug, and the bottom goes in the last plug. Almost done. Nice job, Nancy. Looks like we're ready to roll. Actually, it looks like we're out a bit early here. Nothing's developing like it should be. Let's get back to base and track from there. I don't want to follow a bum lead on a system with this much potential. Brooks been paying Scott off?
These symbols match Scott's. This must be some sort of code. So does this one. Hmm. These are all of the windmill. That must be where Scott's been meeting Brooke. Nancy, have you seen Scott? Not since we got back. There's a huge front coming in and he's nowhere to be seen. This is not like Scott. If you see him around, will you let me know? Chase and Frosty and I are supposed to be leaving for the Grange soon, and I really need to know that someone is keeping an eye on these fronts. Nancy, what are you doing here? You mean me, as opposed to Brooke? <laughs> Brooke? What are you talking about? When I was fixing the phone jack, I accidentally overheard the phone conversation you two had. I could hear it through the headset on your desk. And just what do you think you overheard? Enough to know you two are working together. You've been sabotaging your own team, haven't you? You've been doing everything you can to make sure Brooke's team wins and yours loses. That's ridiculous. That's why you're meeting her way out here, so the people who've been looking up to you all this time couldn't see her paying you off. I have never gotten the credit I deserve for the work I've done, ever! I know more about tornadoes than any person alive, and I get neither the respect nor the compensation people half as brilliant as me get without lifting a finger! Why? Because I work for a podunk college run by podunk incompetence bent on badmouthing and spiting me at every turn just because I don't play well with others at their idiotic staff meetings. Why don't you just quit? Because thanks to them, I'm considered impossible to work with. No other school will hire me. I'm stuck here and they know it. So yes, I've been sabotaging my own team. And yes, Brooke is paying me a small fortune to do so because I've had it. I'm through. Tornado's forming. I can feel it. It'll be on the ground in minutes, and it's going to be huge. And here you are, a novice out in the field and all alone. <coughs> Nancy, this is Debbie. Over. I'm here. I think Scott knocked me out. He did what? When I confronted him about selling the team out to Brooke, he went berserk. I can't believe he would do that, and with Brooke Tavanaugh of all people. Well, we'll deal with that later. Right now, I need you down here at the Grange ASAP. We need to evacuate the theater, and you've got my Grange keys with you in Frosty's car. I'm on my way. Over and out. chaos here. I was able to cobble together a pretty basic tracking system back at the homestead, and instantly I knew we were in trouble. The storm was showing a high potential of moving into town, but without the proper readings, we couldn't issue an alert. I knew we'd have to evacuate the Grange in person. But when we got here, we saw that it's locked. The shelter is locked on a performance night. I need you to take care of this while the rest of us work on a backup plan, okay? I'm trusting you here. I know you can do this. There are a lot of people depending on you right now. What is this now? Who would double lock a storm shelter? Nancy, quick, which key opens the shelter? Yes, you did it! Nice job, Nancy. Well, I think the worst is past. 
Nancy, where are you going? Get in the shelter! I can't just let Scott get away. Okay, Nancy, first thing, switch on your GPS. That little dot you see, follow that and it will lead you right to Scott. We put a tracker on his truck. It's a safety thing. But Nancy, be careful out there. Keep this radio on and I'll do my best to keep you safe. Nancy, I'm really sorry about everything that happened back there. Scott, he... he wasn't always like this. I knew... I mean, I was worried about him earlier. His heart clearly wasn't in it anymore. He was putting us in danger. I just wanted to do what's best. That's not what it sounded like when I overheard you talking to Frosty. You two wanted to get rid of Scott. And from where I was standing, you sure didn't sound very concerned about safety. Nancy, I know it probably sounded bad, but there's a lot you don't know. Pete, the intern you took over for? His injury wasn't just an accident. He got hurt because Scott sent him out where he never should have been. After that, I knew I had to take over. That's still no... Looking back, I do things differently. But I did what I did for the right reasons. I wanted to push Scott until the world saw how reckless he was being. It was a mistake. I screwed up and I accept responsibility. No matter what happens out there, promise me that you'll be careful. I promise. Made it! Dear Ned, once the theater was successfully evacuated, Debbie and Chase were able to follow the GPS tracking signal to the spring house, where Scott and I had safely weathered the storm. Although he was pretty seriously shaken up in the crash, Scott came to in time to see Frosty arrive with the police. He received community service for destruction of public property and interfering with public safety records. He didn't fare so well with a the college. They fired him quicker than lightning hitting a bee stung greyhound, as they say around here. So it looks like he'll actually be serving the community now, instead of just pretending to. Even if it's just by picking up garbage by the side of the road. Word spread quickly about Scott's misdeeds, and soon Brooke Tavanaugh, the rival chase team leader, found herself out of a job as well. With the storm season almost over, it looked like both teams were out of the competition. Debbie, always the organizer, decided to combine the remaining members on both teams for the remainder of the season. Without Scott's ever-present storm cloud hanging over the team and his constant sabotaging, the team really began to hit its stride with Debbie in charge. Two days after I told Krollmeister I had found the source of the sabotage and the change in team leaders, Debbie's chase team was greeted by a surprise delivery, the next generation of Krollmeister's storm tracking and detection equipment. With Scott out of the picture, Frosty renegotiated his contract. 
Now that he's able to pursue his own projects on the side, he's just about doubled his output. He's launched his own business, and when he's not getting pelted by softball-sized hail, you'll find him in his studio. Chase has given up on his dreams of finding oil. Even if he hadn't, he wouldn't have the time to look. Debbie's keeping him too busy. Free from having to spend his days fixing Scott's mistakes, Chase has finally had the opportunity to show off his keen sense for weather. Now that Debbie has accepted Scott's old position as head of the Canute Storm Team, he's become her right-hand man. Last I heard, he was going to assist Debbie in her classes in the fall. And when I got home, I found a surprise delivery myself as well. The first shipment of my lifetime supply of Cocoa Kringle Bars. Krollmeister also sent me a note telling me to keep my bags packed. He has a special surprise trip planned for me as a way to say thanks. As long as it's some place where the clouds stay in the sky like they belong, I'll be happy to go. While the winners of the Green Skies event won't be determined until fall, things are looking pretty good for Debbie's team. With the new equipment, they've logged the most storm data. And although Debbie won't be showing anyone until she's 100% sure, the team may have made a verified touchdown prediction. Yesterday, a postcard from Pa arrived. After the town repaired the storm damage to the Grange, they restaged the town play. They even added a new part about the storm, including a scene where a certain someone unlocks the storm shelter. As long as it wasn't played by Pa in a wig, I'm happy. Pa says that he remembered most of his lines this time, at least the important ones. As for me, well, I've had just about enough stormy weather for one season. Love, Nancy. After risking my life chasing down deadly twisters, I think it's time for a change of pace. I've decided to join Bess and George on their trip to Kyoto, Japan. I've always wanted to visit Japan, from the exotic food and wild fashion in the cities to the nature and tradition in the smaller towns. I know there's going to be a ton to see and do. As a thank you for all of my hard detective work, P.G. Krollmeister has reserved a room for me at one of the area's best ryokans, or traditional inns. It'll be nice to finally take a break from solving mysteries and to spend a few weeks without danger and dark secrets hiding around every corner. I've already heard that the Ryokan I'm staying in has quite a reputation. I'm not sure exactly for what, though. Well, I'll find that out soon enough. Join me in my next adventure, Shadow at the water's edge.